I wanted to do a video talking about how hard ops and box cutter kind of differ on some things on the decision side while they're basically maintained and curated by the same team our design philosophies with each of these tools kind of differ we experiment with a lot of things in box cutter that we've perfected in hops first uh, one of those is um, you know kind of the behavior of the inset so we'll take this cube and we will just bevel it and I'll press 1 in order to set the profile to 0.5 and so we have our first bevel in place in fact I'll let you see the modifier panel while I'm working and we'll go under operations and we'll just step it and since we're in non-destructive it's just going to add a new bevel at 50% of the previous bevel so it's just a half bevel as I call it so if I do a cut you can see that it's already taking place on the second level of bevel in fact we'll roll a few more segments into that just to make sure that we get the smoothest result for this demonstration and we can see that we're cutting on the second level so if I press X I can switch over to slice I press X again I switch over to inset and insets actually the topic of discussion so we can see that inset is basically set up to basically bevel on the shape on the last level basically adhering to the sorting rules in place personally I feel that this is a bit of a large decision to make um, however with box cutter we experiment with making the very hard decisions for you in order to get a very fluid and fast experience but the byproduct of that is the behavior panel where you can tailor it to your likes alternatively uh, I will actually switch this to a to make it a make box and we'll just shift to keep that and I'm just going to select this and this and we're actually going to use the hard ops inset which is a little bit different but basically when you start out you get the same result however in addition to that you also get the F9 panel where you can then choose things like sort the modifier you can go in and still adjust the thickness afterwards you can also choose if you want to keep the bevels or not as far as the inset goes in this example it's not really the most appropriate for what I'm trying to show but if we were to want a result that actually used the later level of modifier and then we still had to sort we could still do so and that's really the difference between hard ops and box cutter is box cutter will let you just make the choice very quickly and most of the decisions related to the minutia will already be made for you meanwhile with hard ops you're able to experiment with the settings that are a part of what makes the experience what it is and get a more curated result and you know the point of this isn't to say that one method is better than the other but it's merely to point out these differences so that you can best utilize them for example sometimes i will do a cut and then opt to just shift it i will just do a cut and with that bull shape selected, I can use Q and actually shift this over to be a slash. And this slash has inherited all the properties of the previous smash, and I'm still able to go in and modify this and get it to my perfection. But Hops is uh, all about control, while Box Cutter is all about just really having fun and just getting in and just working very fast and getting where you need to go to very quickly. It's pretty much a reboot of hops in a way if it was just only focused on the cutting workflow which is why I feel that you know each of these tools have their respective fan bases but me personally I am a big fan of both they both serve a very specific need in fact you know there's no easier way to cut a cube than getting in here and actually using box cutter however you know there is also something very um, you know controlling and prismatic I guess about being able to get in here and just set up a boolean manually and perfect it and adjust it and go in edit mode and do what you need to do with it and you know part of hard ops's philosophy is that you know we want to experiment with every step of the process and try to give the user a level of control to find a result that's unique to them that possibly is completely different than anything that I've previously shown in fact the curse of these tools is that we're forever haunted by people showing us how to use these tools um, you know the moment we put out an update the users will immediately respond with results that just put our test results to shame just showing us really the true potential of the tools that you know we aim to put forth so using these tools in conjunction really is the most recommended way to approach hard surface and blender to just get in there and just do box cutter when you need do hard ops when you need I mean if I were to do a box cut here and we press X a couple of times to change that to an inset we can see the inset gets a little bit unruly 
And the only thing we have at our disposal is pressing T. And in this case, Blender just completely just crashed and gave up. So let's test out the power of our autosave. So we'll just scale Blender up and just go to recover autosave and we'll just open the last autosave and pay dirt. We're actually back where we started. So I'll actually use power save to save this as inset. So, you know, crashes happen. It could be our fault, it could be Blender's fault, it could be the fact that we're trying to cram so many decisions in a single keystroke, in a single motion, that things just get a little unstable. But let's let's try that again because the inset example wasn't supposed to end in that fashion. You know, that's more like uh, when tutorials go wrong. In fact, moving things from an angle is something that's still a little bit of an oddity in box cutter. We still don't have that view control movement on lock. So sometimes I forget about that and I try to rotate the view and move things like as if that's been coded in. But we can see that with inset, it's kind of a little bit of a lottery. We're, we're lucky to really get anywhere with this and more than likely keep triggering these mesh errors and calculation issues and we're gonna be on our desktop once again looking at a um, person dressed up in a wine testing costume or something. So I'll press A and we'll shift this to be a make. I'll press T to turn off uh, solidify because that's not needed. And we'll just click to apply this, you know, no need to hold shift, you know, old habits are just terrible for me. So let's, you know, instead try using the hard hops inset. So we'll just inset and notice that of course with inset we have outset, which hasn't yet been added to box cutter but we can just turn off sort modifiers that may keep things a little saner and we'll just scale this in. And an important thing to keep in mind with inset as well is that the way that inset works is it um, makes a duplicate of the mesh and then solidifies it and then slices it and then fits it to the shape. So when you think about things in terms of that, it's not really the most logical way to go about setting up uh, a bunch of modifiers to create what we're looking at and admiring as an inset. In fact, we turn sword on after we get things from being so weird. And we now have the desired result, which is a inset on the second level of bevel that we can still adjust. However, we were able to get there while also keeping the roundedness of the first one. And that's a level of control that we just don't have in box cutter at this time. In fact, box cutter is a bit of a slower, slower crawl because we have to ensure that, you know, the workflows that we add are logical and nimble and quick. You know, those are the rules. While well, hops can um, be allowed to be a sandbox of options with plenty of menus and varying options to make things easier. You might have noticed that when I was extruding this down, it just got problematic. In fact, right there would actually probably work. And then I could just lower the bevel amount in order to get it to contend with this corner area. I'm always curious in why these things happen. So no easier way to find out than getting in here and looking at the wire through wireframe. In fact, if we wanted to actually solve this, we could um, use our old friend, the control shift B bevel helper. And in here, we just begin lowering segments until we get a more reasonable result right there. And then we don't have to limit our bevel anymore. But as Weld gets better in Blender, I feel that we'll eventually be able to use it to prevent these sort of geometric convergences from happening. But I just wanted to uh, kind of highlight that just to ensure that I'm not running away from any sort of polygonal issues. I mean, even this area here can be refined with just uh, a little bit of, you know, probably modifier apply. We'll apply the first level of bevel and then just switch over to knife tool and just use our buddy knife with the mesh selected, of course, and just quarantine that area. And generally when there's shading issues, I will just quarantine an area. And this is something I used to do back in the day in 2.79 because there wasn't much choice. However, you're also able to alt click sharpen and just add a weighted normal. So I just wanted to do a quick video talking about some of the differences between hops and box cutter as far as inset goes and maybe give you some insight as to why I make some of the choices that I make in videos whenever I just jump to make and just opt to do things like draw a difference box and just switch to a slash instead. 
sometimes it's just easier to just draw it, get it right, be able to see what you're getting on the inside of the mesh and really examine your result to really baby it all the way to the uh, final result that you go are going for. And then from there, shift the bowl because otherwise you would just make a slash. And you wouldn't even know that there's a geometric issue inside that would cause you to be limited in stacking up another Boolean. But now we can just go in and just modify or scroll this thing and take a look at our render and see what we got. And you know, it's not a bad cube. You know, we might modify or scroll, I mean, uh, material scroll that thing to a better result. We could just select everything and just material scroll this thing to success. So in a way, hard ops is intended to, you know, fill in the holes for box cutter and just help it be a little more nimble on its quest while providing some of the support tools that just are too big to go into box cutter and add additional systems. So, you know, if it, when it comes to making your choice between the two, just know that they definitely are intended to play off of each other. This piece could also use a way to normal to fix that shading. I just can't be looking at shading in my face looking terrible. But with that, we can wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.